be there with you in the courts if necessary. And God damn it, I can't wait till the victory party when we get to, to celebrate the victory of the strength. Thank you, Chad, very much. Um, Occasions Catering has been kind enough to provide us all of the food today. Let's hear it for Occasions Catering. Make sure you get something to eat if you haven't done so already. I mentioned that our friends from, uh, I didn't tell you who, but it's PSAC 901 have made their way all the way here from Kingston to come and show their support. Let's have PSAC come up here and give us some words of, uh, of support. principles embedded within our collective agreement, which reads as follows. Queen's University and PSAC Local 901 are situated on the territory of Potomashani and Anishinaabe. Uh, this territory is included in the Dish with One Spoon, One Home Belt Covenant, an agreement between the Potomashani and Anishinaabe nations to peaceably share and take care of the resources of the Great Lakes. Newcomers, we're later invited into this agreement in the spirit of friendship and respect. The dish with one spoon, wampum belt, calls upon us to take care of this land and all beings on it and to share its resources reciprocally by recognizing each other's needs and while ensuring that the dish is never empty. In order to do so, as we work on this land, it's our understanding that we must seek to learn and be guided by Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee. The seven grandfather teachings of the Anishinaabe teaches us to treat all beings with humility, respect, love, honesty, bravery, wisdom, and truth. Similarly, the Haudenosaunee seven principles guide us to live in a good way as we follow the four white pine roads that lead. PSAC 91 is here today because our members believe that we must do all things necessary to attain equity and social justice for our members. Queen's University and the broader Kingston community and for all workers. It is in this spirit that mandates our presence here to show solidarity with QP 3903's fight for better wages, a better teaching environment, and a campus free of policing and surveillance. And safe and free for all. We are here today because we know that the fight at York is the same as the fight at Queen's. The SAC 901's mandate is to fight for justice. There is no safe workplace without justice for all. An injury to one is an injury to all. That is why, along with multiple campus organizations, groups, and representatives, PSAC 901 has signed on to Queen's University Upper High Play Best Quality. One strike to the liberated Palestine and the end of Israeli apartheid by demanding Queens to divest all economic and academic stakes in Israel. We, as unionized workers, seek to end all interlocking systems of oppression through collective action and through solidarity with oppressed peoples worldwide. As campus community members on Turtle Island, we must demand that the institution we work for exert every effort to dismantle the systems of oppression and state violence that Palestinians have been subject to for over 75 years. Yeah. Queen's University Apartheid Divest Coalition demands Queen's University immediately divest all economic and academic stakes in Israeli apartheid. 
We demand that the university, in a specific order, cut ties from all corporations and institutions complicit in genocide, settler yeah. colonialism, copper ties, or ethnic cleansing against Palestinians. Two, divest from companies profiting from Israeli apartheid, noting that Queen's University has divested in the 1980s from the South African apartheid. Three, seize the exchange partnership with both Tel Aviv University and Ben Gurion University of the Negev. <laughs> noting that Palestinian affiliates of Queen's would be restricted from access to this program given Israel's apartheid policy and therefore violates Queen's very own non-discrimination policy. Four, vigorously, vigorously protect students, staff, and faculty's academic freedom and the right to political speech. Five, recognize and adopt the Arab-Canadian Lawyers Association definition of anti-Palestinian racism at Queen's University University, so as to address the rampant anti-Palestinian racism and support Palestinian students and their allies in their identities and advocacy. Yeah. This yeah. has already been presented to Queen's University Principal Patrick Dean and his administration by the Palestinian, Arab and Palestinian allied students. The definition has yet to be adopted. Yeah. Yeah. On March 8th, the International Women's Day, PSAC 901 joined Solidarity for Palestinian Human Rights walkout to interrupt the Board of Trustees luncheon, demanding that our workplace divest from genocide. The same day, Queen's Coalition Against Austerity held a rally demanding Queen's and its board to recognize education as a right. Amid all the talk of the austerity we have seen lately, it is important to remember that education is a human right. Human rights have no price tag. The SAC understands that austerity and cuts are an attack on education and academic freedom. They are an attack on workers and students. They are an attack on our kids and community and all peoples on Turtle Island. March 8th was a beautiful day. We came together in solidarity to fight for divestment, transparency, and better education for all. That day, a Palestinian flag was raised and flew over the campus. In a statement, Queens later conflated a flag raising with a hate-motivated act. They have since retracted the statement, but we remember. The damage is done. That is why this morning, PSAC 901 filed a complaint against the Greek Lawyers on Article 1, 4, 20, and 1, 25 of the Collective Agreement, the Queen's Harassment and Discrimination Policy, the Occupation of Health and Safety, the Ontario Human Rights Act, the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedom, and any other relevant policy and legislation. The declaration by the university that Palestinian existence itself is a a Jewish and Arab community inevitably and inherently stand in opposition to one another. This bigoted thinking, along with threats from Queen's security services to limit the legal right for pro Palestinian protesters to protest on campus. The uneven surveillance and treatment of pro Palestinian protesters pro-Israel activists on campus. A failure to reprimand serious acts of racial violence perpetrated by pro-Israel counter protesters throughout our anti-apartheid week, as well as an institutional-wide failure to meaningfully address a history of personal and systemic race-based discrimination on campus represent a poisoned work environment for Palestinian students and workers as well as many other racialized students on campus. Each of these failures represent a pattern of colonial oppression that flourishes on Queen's campus and is aided by the administration. We want to reclaim our campus for workers and for students. This is why
we have filed our grievance. This is why we stand here today in solidarity with our siblings at QP3903 as they too face increased surveillance and police oversight on campus. An injury to one is an injury to all. United, we win. Thank you so very much. Thank you to the membership of Peace Act 901 for being here. Yeah. If you're gonna come up on this mic, by the way, you gotta project because we need everybody to hear you. So make sure you're nice and loud. I just want to say something. Uh, maybe some of you have heard about. Many, I'm sure of you have heard about um, a police incursion that happened to a visiting professor here recently, Mohanad Ayash, who was here. Mohanad is a Palestinian scholar who was visiting from Calgary, and he was here to give a lecture. And just as he was about to begin in one of the buildings on campus here at York University, two police officers entered his classroom. The police told Mohanad that they had been told that there was some kind of disruption or demonstration that was possible to happen in the classroom that he was teaching in. And because he is a bigger person than I am, Mohammed invited these police officers. If you think that there's a problem, why don't you just sit down and maybe you'll learn something. And after five minutes, the police decided to take off. But I want to bring that up because of the speakers that we just heard from PSAC and because of the repression that's going on on campus and this framing of hate, the framing of hate crime. It's a more complicated thing that I'm not gonna take up too much time with now, but I just wanna say that we have to stop framing things as hate crime and we have to talk about anti-Palestinian racism. We have to talk about anti-black racism. We have to talk about the colonial and decolonial struggle that we're part of here. It's not about simply naming hate. The police will use the term hate and they will absorb into it anything that makes pro-Israel activists right now and their supporters feel uncomfortable. They will label anything in that category as hatred. So we have to stop framing what is what we are experiencing as a hate crime and stop uh, validating this police regime where when somebody is experiencing what's called hate, it yields a police response because that's what we mean when we keep ourselves safe. That it is not about police coming in and policing people's speeches, people's uh, expressions. It is uh, a much different framing that we have to think about. So I just wanted to get that out there. Our next speaker representing the No Pride in Policing Coalition, and I will add the author of the newly released, released edition of, um, of, excuse me, I'm saying, <laughs> The Regulation of Desire. I'm so hyped up right now. I was at the book launch. Gary Kinsman! Thanks so much, Desmond. I'm sure people can hear me, but if you can't, let me know. I was a student here for five years when I did my undergraduate work, and I have to say that being here today is actually one of the most important days I've ever spent at York University. I'm bringing you the full support of the No Pride in Policing Coalition, and we call for victory to QP3903. The No Pride in Policing Coalition is a queer and trans, black, racialized, and indigenous organization that is focused on abolition politics. Central to this is defunding and abolishing the police. The, the police should not only not be on picket lines, they should not be on university campuses, and they actually should be nowhere. I thought I'd share with you some historical examples of QP and QP3903 that people here might not be aware of. The first union I ever joined was QP. 
I was a member Woo! of QP 1230, Woo! which represented the library workers at the University of Toronto. It was one of the first union locals to ever, ever try to put sexual orientation protection in the union contract. In 1975, this was raised in their strike, and members of the Gay Marxist Study Group, which I was part of, and the Gay Alliance Towards Equality were joined them on their picket line. QP has been central to raising all of the demands around sexuality, around gender, within the union movement, and within our society as a whole. And I want to praise QP for that, and it needs to continue, and it needs to be expanded. I was living in Sudbury in 2000 and 2001, when there was the mine mill strike against Falcon Bridge. The official slogan of mine mill, which is now part of Unifor, was one day longer. We're gonna survive one day longer than the bosses. The flying squads from QP3903 came up to support the Solidarity Weekend with the wonderful slogan of strike to win. It was drawn from the Ontario Coalition against Poverty's slogan of Fight to Win. The people from QP3903 who came to Sudbury added so much to the mine mill strike. People were chanting one day longer, people from QP3903 spoke, and they were starting to chant incredibly powerfully, Strike to Win! This actually helped to produce a more militant struggle on the part of Mine Mill against the police and also against what I will call ACUFUCK, the strike banking firm that Falcon Bridge had hired. So it's really important for us to remember the history and the struggle of QP3903. It has won so much for so many people and it can't be forgotten and it needs to be defended and remembered against the powerful social organization of forgetting. Now the police, the police are now obviously a major problem as has just been spoken about for the Palestine Solidarity Movement. They're trying to scare us, they're trying to intimidate us, they're trying to destroy our organizations. Sometimes the police have actually been successful in doing that. They managed to destroy, through their actions, the encampment solidarity networks in much of Toronto. That is what they intend to do, because they know that the only way we are going to win is if we rebel and if we revolt, and that's why the police are maintained. The police were set up against Indigenous people in this country, against Black people, against poor people, against workers, especially when workers are on strike. That is what the police are. That is why they need to be abolished. <laughs> QP Ontario has also played, QP 3903 has played a crucial role in getting QP Ontario and other unions to support the boycott divestment sanctions campaign in support of the Palestinian people. One of the reasons why QP is sometimes under attack these days. I would like to ask all of you to join with the No Pride and Policing Coalition in organizing for Abolition Pride this year with this under the theme of From Tuckeronto to Palestine and Beyond. We will be focusing on Palestine on what's going on in Sudan, on what's going on in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, in ha on Haiti, and also pushing forward our struggles to abolish the police, to abolish prisons, and to abolish carceral injustice. <laughs> Workers' struggles and support for Palestine are central to what pride should be. That is not what corporate pride thinks and this year, we will actually make an abolitionist pride that supports Palestine, that supports workers' struggles, including your struggle here at, in 3903. We will make that central to what pride is all about. 
Thank you so much. Strike to win. Strike to win. Thank you so much, Gary. Uh, before we continue with the programming, I want to direct your attention, if you can see, back there where a little bit of... It's happening! The flag is going up! The Palestinian flag is being erected! We see you! Here today, we see you out there. Maybe we can get a nice picture with everybody standing in front of those banners after we're done here. Yeah. Take a picture right now if you'd like to. One more public service announcement. Oh my God. I think it's obvious in a gathering like this, but do not speak to the police, please. There are police present. Do not speak to the police. They are not our friends. Anything you say can and will be used against you, etc. Do not speak to the police who are here. If you have an issue with anything that's going on, though, feel free to talk to one of the marshals who are identified in the bright vest and let them know what's going on. They are here to keep you safe, not the police. Also, there's lots of food left over. I know there's a lot of hungry picketers out here. Take your food with you. Make sure you take some away if you're not gonna eat it now. We've gotta have all that food gone. Thank you to our caterers once again. Our next speakers are going to be representing the York Federation of Students. I had one of two possible speakers who was going to be here. We've got Ashley from YFS, give it up! Hey y'all, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for inviting me to speak today. My name's Ashley, my pronouns are he, him. I am the president of the York Federation of Students. We are the Undergraduate Students Union uh, here at York University. Since October 7, students on this campus have seen a continued increase of cops uh, in our spaces. We've been given rationales of standard patrols or inspections and walkthroughs, yet one thing has been certain. Students have felt increasingly unsafe on this campus for the past few months. All of this culminated a few weeks ago when we saw TPS violently arrest a QP 3903 member for exercising their legal right to strike. Students, TAs, and community members were harassed throughout the day, intimidated, and brutally assaulted in the process of the arrest. That day, we saw upwards of 15 TPS cruisers, more than 30 TPS officers, special agents, and court services men. Can I get a shave? Is this what our city deems essential? Is this where our tax dollars go? Is this what a $1 billion TPS budget gets you? Shame. 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 We say it time and time again, police do not and cannot keep us safe. This is why, like we said earlier, we have marshals, but this is why we build communities. We understand deeply what we need, and most importantly, we look out for each other. The police, on the other hand, they usually only care about one thing, and that is capital. Over and over again, police will consistently choose to protect capital and the interests of those in power, not the people. The other thing that police know how to do really well is to intimidate us. Since October 7th, in our student centers, we've seen almost 20 instances of TPS presence in our buildings. This doesn't even begin to include the paid duty officers stationed in our spaces. On February 2nd, TPS services interrupted a lecture by distinguished Palestinian scholar, Dr. Mohanad Ayash, citing that they were reporting to a major event and were called by the university. Yay! On January 19, TPS services were doing a regular walkthrough at the Second Student Center where the York University Muslim Students Association held a panel with Dr. Ihab Badr, who was speaking on his experience providing urgent care in Gaza during the Zionist attacks. On October 26, TPS came to check out a disruption at the Second Student Center during a keynote event that we, the YFS, held with Amazon labor organizer, Chris Smalls. Wow. 
These are just some of the many, many instances from just this past year where we've seen TPS presence in our spaces and on our campuses, causing fear and worry for so many of our members. Ultimately, what's happening right now on our campuses are a microcosm of what is happening in the streets in Toronto. At every rally, march, and action for Palestine, we continue to see an increase of police numbers, vehicles, equipment, and ultimately intimidation. At each action, TPS unnecessarily escalates, brutally arresting members of our community. This, this can only be seen as intimidation and as an avenue to demonstrate their gross power. Fuck that! Police need to go, they need to be removed from our campuses, and they need to be removed from our streets. We are sick of the culture of intimidation and threats that we continue to see at all levels. This is our campus, a campus built by students, TAs, faculties, and workers. Whether it's a labor strike, student advocacy, or the fight for Palestinian freedom, we must be united in our fight. All of our issues are deeply, deeply interconnected with each other, and we have to stay vigilant in fighting for what is right. There is a reason that we chant TPS, KKK, IOF, you're all the same. And it's because they continue to work hand in hand together, sharing tactics and strategies to continue exerting their power over us. Toronto Police Services and all state sanctioned law enforcement will continue to threaten, harass and intimidate us. As we witness an ongoing genocide and the effort to silence speaking against those atrocities, it can be overwhelming, but we must remain steadfast in our goals. One step at a time, it is imperative that we demolish the systems that continue to oppress us and work in tandem together to keep the power away from us, the masses. We demand cops off our campus now. We demand cops off our streets now. We demand an end to the intimidation and the over-policing of workers, students, and community members on all fronts. So join me as I say, cops off our campus. Cops. That was awesome. Thank you so very, very much. Uh, we have a few more folks for you to hear from today, but because we are so lucky to be graced with the musical stylings of Faith Nolan. We're gonna bring her back up here, Faith. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Who have been out in these streets, organizing, mobilizing, teaching, resisting on the front line of struggle to try and push this completely negligent government of ours to do the right thing, to stop funding the state of Israel, to stop sending them weapons, to end the siege on Gaza, and to challenge the occupation as a whole. It is my pleasure to welcome Rawan from Palestinian Youth Movement. Children who are murdered. Shame! 
but we know that our people are not numbers. We know they are not statistics. Every time we come out, we keep saying a higher number, but we know that they had dreams, they had lives. There's a little girl that was, her story was posted, she was two years old. All she wanted was to travel and to have a Lego. That was literally the only thing she wanted. 14,000 children, shame. shame! We know that there are entire family lineages that are being completely wiped out. Family lineages. Palestinians who have literally been in Palestine for generations and generations. Even the Christian population in Gaza is almost completely extinct. Shame! Shame! But we know that we have a responsibility here. We have a role to play here. We owe it to Palestinians on the ground who are resisting each and every single day. They are steadfast in their resistance. We need to be steadfast in our resistance. We need to hold this administration accountable. We need to hold this Canadian state accountable. We need to make sure that we are showing up each and every single day. We've seen at U of T, at York, at Queens, at McGill, and other universities, we've seen them invest literally millions and millions of dollars into Israeli genocide. Shame! They continue to enact and entrench anti-Palestinian racism. They pander to Zionist donors. They tokenize and exploit the labor of racialized and precarious workers. And they intensify policing against those involved in Palestine solidarity actions, particularly black and indigenous solidarity students. Shame! We've seen this repression extend to the picket lines here at York. We've seen, like my comrades have said before me, we have seen that on March 4th, they arrested the, the shameful Toronto police, arrested a QP member during a legal strike action shame. Before proceeding to brutalize a lot of folks who were on the picket line. This is so shameful, shame! shame! We know that we are being surveilled on this campus, we know we are being surveilled on every other campus, and we are going to say no cops on campuses! And we know that this repression is of course not new. We know that since the very beginning of October, Toronto police have been disgustingly violent towards anybody who has been speaking out about Palestine. On December 10th, we saw the Toronto police literally put their knee on a man's neck while they were arresting him. Shame! This is literally a tactic that is taken by the Israeli military. They literally work together. They literally continue to use tactics, the same tactics, the same violent strategies. They continue to operate together. We know that the Toronto police is actually trained by Israeli military. Shame! And we know that this repression is not new for racialized peoples across the board. We obviously have seen many ways in which the state-sanctioned violence has manifested against indigenous land defenders for decades. Shame! Shame! We know that in 1990, the Canadian Armed Forces and the RCMP repressed indigenous land defenders during the Oka resistance, and we continue to see the same violence and the same, um, the same violence against our people today who are defending their land today. Shame! Shame! We know that this settler colonial police violence is not new and it repress represses any kind of resistance and any kind of resistance against the oppressors. Shameful! This is extremely shameful! Shame! Shame! But we also know that people like us, people here today, that are coming together to make sure we're not only just standing in solidarity together, we are standing in joint struggle, we are going to continue to struggle together, we are going to make sure that we win. And we know that people like us who have come together 
who will remain together have literally brought empires to their knees. We will bring this empire to its knees. We will see the liberation of Palestine in our lifetime. We will see the liberation of indigenous peoples in our lifetime. We will see land back in our lifetime. So I need you to be extremely loud and say it with me. From an organization representing sex workers. The conversation that we are having about policing cannot really be had unless we are talking about all different kinds of people who are being targeted by the police. And that includes undocumented people, that includes migrants, it includes sex workers, and we're very, very honored to have M from Butterfly to come and address us now. Welcome. Butterfly, and I'm also a PhD candidate and a member of CPP 903. Thank you. Thank you for coming to this rally, and thank you to the organizers for having us. Can you hear me? Yes, we can! Yes, we can! For years, sex workers and migrant massage parlor workers have endured widespread policing and surveillance, prohibiting their right to leave, work, and survive here in so called Canada. And recently, in 2022, York University signed a five-year memorandum of understanding led by Rhonda Lantern with the mayor of Newmarket, John Taylor, allowing for the York administrators to post, organize, and develop programming in Newmarket. This memorandum was signed right after the town of Newmarket imposed the personal wellness establishment bylaws or the PWE bylaws that will prohibit Asian wellness and massage businesses from operating within their town limits. Then, low income Asian women are excluded and barred from accessing business licenses and forced to have their business shut down. Yes. Hundreds of migrant, uh, hundreds of migrant color and sex workers are displaced from their livelihoods with no income in the middle of an affordability crisis. Shame! The town of Newmarket has since legitimized a legal regime that allows the police to harass surveil and racially profile migrant workers, subjecting working class Asian women and their families to financial loss, legal burdens, and the constant fear of deportation simply for going to work. Shame! Shame on the York administration for collaborating and actively participating in the policing and oppression of Asian communities. Shame! Shame! The TPS for decades has worked to criminal criminalize and deport migrant sex workers under the facade of protecting trafficking victims. Shame! The TPS conducts sudden raids on Asian wellness and spa establishments, searching the belongings of workers, taking down all their phone records just to find a reason to deport them. And this raid and detainment, our community members have reported that their money and jewelry have been regularly stolen by law enforcement officers. And with every search, furniture, businesses are damaged, bags and purses are confiscated with the money taken and never returned. Shame! Sex workers are also also risk being outed to their families by law enforcers, undermining their safety within their own homes and that of their children. Anti-trafficking policies systematically target and endanger sex workers, emboldening robberies, sexual violence, and physical assault from crimes. Migrant sex workers do not need any saviors. We do not need the TPS. We do not need more cops. No more pigs. No more pigs. Yeah, back then. No more 
struggles together is so powerful. Thank you very, very much for being here. I want to encourage people to go to ButterflySW.org because Butterfly is always posting really important campaigns and grassroots actions that they're doing on their website. That's ButterflySW.org. Get more information about this group. Support the important work that they are doing. Um, if you are here from Yuxa, you're going to be next, but before that, I am going to welcome from Yufa, Eve Hawk. Welcome, Eve. Thank you, Desmond. And thank you, everybody who's here. I need to thank the organizers, of course, many have. Um, but you know, I also really want to thank the people who are here because there are lots of folks to give up today, but then there are folks who come out week after week, right, when there's not tons of people around and it's cold, and they come out to the lines, and they're here to pressure the employer to come to the table, to bargain in good faith, and settle a fair deal for QP 3903. Woo! Woo! They're here to strike to win. So, also, I need to thank you for letting me come here and address you as a rank-and-file UFA member. I want to express my support 
for our colleagues and comrades in QP3903. And I want to tell my colleagues in UFA that we need to step up the support QP3903, right? <laughs> any UFA members who are left, okay? I saw a lot of you scuttle away. But who, who are left, listen, we need to move out of a charity model of support of unions and we need to be standing yep. shoulder to shoulder in solidarity. Yeah. Yeah. The of money has been donated. We need to donate more money yes. from the coffers of UFA to support those who are on the lines right now on strike at 3903. Now I want to say this is not my first time at this Sentinel Road picket. But each time I'm here, I ask myself, why are the cops here? I don't ask this naively. I mean, we know about the long history of police violence being deployed in the service of employers against unions. So yes, we should probably not be surprised. But you know what? I want to stay surprised. I want to be freshly alarmed and I want to be angry each and every time I see the cops here. Right? I do not want this to be something I have to get used to ever. I want to pull on that emotion. I want to draw that to galvanize me and my youthful colleagues and others into action and support of and solidarity with all our striking comrades each and every time. So we know what happened here weeks ago, right? The arrest of the picket captain, the violence against the people who are on the lines here. We also know that the debates about the legality of these actions has become a fog that covers up the fact that policing and surveillance has always been on university campuses. Right, we've had recent commentary on the Sentinel picket arrest that's pointed to the erosion of police so-called neutrality at labor pickets, the aggressive application of mischief charges to cast a chill on picketing strategies. Yeah. Our UFA colleague David Dury commented in the recent Press Progress article, mischief involves interference with the use, enjoyment, or access to property. Well, let's have a look at this property, okay? Let's consider how much distortion of a charter right to freedom of assembly would have to happen to consider a soft picket right there to be a mischievous interference. The courts have found the Charter of Right to Freedom of Assembly is directly linked to the Charter of Right to Freedom of Expression. Specifically, freedom of assembly is speech in action. What's the speech and what's the action that a picket is meant to produce? Quite simply, assembly, a picket line, even on public property, which includes public roads, arterial, subarterial roads, as these have been called, right? is meant to be a protected act that speaks clearly to all those who come across the line that these striking workers, 39 3 workers, have demands on the employer, including that there will be good faith bargaining to settle on these demands. However, the abrogation of charter rights on university campuses, including racist discrimination, has a long history and is related to these violent actions of the continued police presence. We've, we've heard today all the history of the surveillance, dating back to enemy community members, so-called enemy community members on Canadian campuses, which is the legacy of the war on terror, the RCMP, RCMP surveillance of Muslim Students Association we heard about, um, which has laid the groundwork for the current anti-Palestinian racism and Islamophobic repression on this and other university campuses. Hate crime units of these bloated police services is looking to keep busy at bringing their surveillance and intimidation activities directly and openly onto our university campuses. And they're being invited by university administration, campus security, and others. We've heard of all, absolutely shame, because we've heard of all the examples of TPS on our campus, um, you know, calling them in, 
our black students are studying in Canon Tower, calling them in um, when Mohanad Ayash is giving his talk. Shame! Shame! The university president in her statements after October 7th saying we need more TPS on campus. Shame! Cromwell Report, which happened after the November 2019 incident with the J incident with the JDL and the IDF on our campus, the Cromwell Report recommending more TPS as students. What about Orville Wallace, who is the executive director of community safety, doing a security town hall, right? And saying, yeah, racial profiling, intimidation uh, by TPS on our campus is black is bad for community members, particularly our black community members. And then what happens? TPS a few days later strolls into the department lecture talk by Mohanad Ayash. We're, we still don't know who called TPS because it then says it wasn't them, even though the TPS said it was them, right? What does this tell us? It tells us we cannot be surprised that the police are here today. They're there. They're in front of Barry Hall right now. Why? Because they have always been here on our campus. So let me conclude by asking the question, what might it mean to characterize a picket on property not as an exercise of a charter right, but rather as an interference in use, access, and enjoyment of property when we know as Marx has told us, you all love a Marx quote, that property comes into the world dripping from head to foot from every pore with blood and dirt. How far will this university administration in tandem with the TPS go to protect this property? Well, I guess we're about to find out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to end by saying this is the fourth KP3903 strike I have had the privilege of speaking at. And I mean it when I say strike to win, because you know what? You always do. Thank you very much, Edie. We're wrapping up shortly. We cannot wrap up, however, before we hear from the York University Graduate Students Association. I want to welcome up Sarah from UXA. Hello, everyone. Thank you to all the organizers and everyone who spoke. Today is really important. Let us, ask, let us all ask a basic question. What do cops want to police? Our voices? our commitment to stand against genocide, our unwavering support to the oppressed. Basically, they want to police our humanity. Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. The reality is, in the name of security, time again, we see police attempt to intimidate and even arrest anyone who speaks against their version of what is right or wrong. Their version is trickling down from the elite who further uphold onto power and privilege that racial capitalism and settler colonialism allows them to exercise. This logic comes to surface in its most naked form when anyone speaks about Palestine's right to exist. Let me break it down. This is how brutality manifests on our campus. Firstly, Police presence on campus fosters fear and intimidation, particularly among the marginalized and minority groups. Many students of color and those from low income backgrounds feel targeted and harassed by law enforcement, leading to increased stress and anxiety, hindering their ability to thrive socially and academically. Remember, racial capitalism makes police brutality not only look normal, but also logical. Additionally, police often employs aggressive tactics, escalating situations unnecessarily, putting students at risk of harm. Instances of police brutality and excessive force are not uncommon and can have severe consequences for individuals and the community as a whole.
We have seen that happen on March 4th. Furthermore, the, the presence of police perpetuates the school to prison pipeline disproportionately, affecting students of color. Minor issues can escalate quickly, leading to long-term consequences that harm students' futures. It is imperative here to highlight that York University's investment in policing exacerbates rather than solves the problem. It is time to rethink our campus safety. We have to prioritize alternative strategies that promote community engagement, support, and empowerment. I want to pull people's attention to what happens when police on campus get engaged with protesters. Remember, on May 4th, May 4 shooting in the U.S. in Kent State University is known as the May 4 massacres. For folks who don't know, the shooting happened when National Guard intervened to prevent students' protest against U.S. involvement in Vietnam War at Kent State University campus. The outcome was horrible. As someone who grew up in the U.S. and still has family there, I thought Canada would make my experience better on campus. I thought my experience would be safer. It is clearly not. In conclusion, policing on campus, especially at York, jeopardizes students' well-being and undermines our commitment to inclusivity, equity, and justice. It is imperative that we advocate for a cop-free campus to create safer and more inclusive environment for students and faculty. For this, I want to invite colleagues college students, university students across the province for an Ontario-wide participation. I want to call on students to participate in organized walkouts to condemn police presence on campus and hopefully successfully establish a police-free campus for all. Thank you. Let's hear it for Sarah from UCSA. I heard that when Fidel Castro used to give speeches, or when he used to like talk with his inner circle, he'd have everybody sitting down and they'd be tired, and he'd say, five more minutes, comrades, five more minutes, and then he'd talk for like four hours. I promise you, there's two more speakers. Everyone's been wonderfully and, wonderful and patient. Our second to last speaker, representing Scholars Strike Canada. She was here on the picket line over there just a couple of weeks ago giving an address and a teaching. Idil Abdullahi, welcome. Thank you so much, and thank you so much to everybody for still being out here. We go! Thank you, I won't keep you for very long. I'm here at the Abbott Scholars Strike Canada, and we are here to tell Rhonda Lenten and the administration at York University that we will continue to show up here for our comrades in 3903. We will continue to be here every single day until off the hook. We refuse. You cannot militarize the picket line. You cannot stop us. You cannot stop us from talking about Palestine. That will not happen. We understand what's happening here at York University as not only an attack, an attack on labor, we understand it as an attack on Palestine, we understand it as an attack on students, and we are not having it. We are here to tell Rhonda Lenton and the administration at York University that we know what's happening on this campus. You cannot act as if the rest of us are unaware of the conditions that are being created here for workers. Shame on York University! Shame! Shame on Rhonda Lenton and the administration! Shame! We are going to continue to take back the picket line. No one is going to stop us from being here and doing the things that we need to do. We will continue to be in solidarity. We will continue to fight alongside our comrades in 3903. And with that said, thank you so much. And of course, and always, free Palestine. Saw at this event, and they're going to close it out. Before they do, as Gary mentioned earlier, no pride in police and coalition. 
is having our annual Pride event, our big celebration, our abolitionist Pride event this summer. And I'm not joking, we want to see every single one of you. It is especially important for us this year, with what's happening in the world, for us to make the connections that so many different people here have been making today about our struggles. And we gotta turn the fuck up too, let's be honest, right? So, we need to see you out there in your colors, dancing, celebrating and resisting with us this summer. No Pride and Policing Coalition, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, stay informed for more information about teachings and the big celebration that's gonna be coming up this summer. We're gonna end with Aaron McIntosh from 3903. Aaron, where you at? Introduce yourself. Hello, QB! I'm Chris Bailey from 3903. I'm the lead steward for you too. Uh, it really warms my heart to see everybody out here today. Um, yeah, it's March 4th uh, was a difficult day for me, and I know it was a difficult day for a lot of people. And uh, it's really important to see everyone here and to actually have bodies show up on the picket line. So I just, yeah, I just really want to say that this is awesome. This is also, this is the strength of rank and file and community organizing. Um, I'm happy not to have had any except for sound. Uh, you know, uh, during this, but um, you guys have a lot of, a hell of a lot of power that you can bring to bear in this movement, and uh, it, it looks awesome to see what just a little bit of it looks like today. <laughs> Police are not going to intimidate us, and they, uh, and neither will the university. We're, uh, we're definitely going to keep our strike going. It's week five. We have no intention of stopping until York gives us a serious and uh, and fair offer on uh, on the table in bargaining. We have, no intent, we have no intention of going uh, voluntarily into arbitration or anything like this. Um, this is your decision too. This is just my opinion, right? But um, but you guys control your union, right? The union is you. It's not a third party. So any power that we have is because of you guys. It's because of everyone here and all of the communities that are out today. So just like even at your like most you know down moments, I just want everyone to know that we're in this together and I mean that I'll be here every goddamn day to make sure that you guys are able to exercise your democratic rights. Freedom of, assembly, of freedom of assembly and and collective bargaining and collective negotiation. The university doesn't get to dictate to us what the hell we're going to be doing, what the hell they're going to be paying us. We negotiate that. This is how it works in Canada. This is how it should work throughout the world. You know, like, when I started in... Uh, in 2008, I remember hearing about this, this case of um, a, a man, a young young guy named uh, Junior Milan, who was beaten to death by police on York University property. Shame! Shame! Later uh, that, well, actually before this happened, we had just been roughed up in our in my first strike uh, in 2009, and uh, and Faith Nolan was there to support us with music when they arrested three of our marshals and uh, threw them to the ground in the snow and beat them up. They uh, used every dirty name in the book to try and make us, uh, you know, feel like angry and, uh, and go after them so that they had an excuse to arrest everybody else. Um, that didn't happen. We stayed together, we supported one another, and we stayed at uh, 52 Division until they were released. We'll do that for anyone else. No one left behind. I also want to say that there's been a lot of police presence on campus when it comes to Palestine events. Fuck them! Yeah. Fuck them! Fuck them, exactly. Um, even before this, um, when police uh, 
Police had something to say uh, when uh, when people were fa were uh, were facing sexual violence and sexual harassment on campus. And uh, the direct quote from the officer who came to speak at a, at a feminist event that was organized by students was, "I know I'm not supposed to say this, but if you don't dress like a quote unquote slut, then you won't get raped." Fuck that. And then we got something from the community called the Slut Walk, and uh, that's how that started. That same year, a lot of my students of color were um, were also carded regularly by police. And uh, Shay, I know Desmond's been writing about that, and he's lived it too. Um, I think he mentioned something about being here for one year or two years, something like that, and being carded 50 times. That's fucked up. It's absolutely shameful. Shay! So we're here to say that we're going to keep our picket lines up and that this is our legal right to freedom of assembly and the police don't get to dictate, dictate that to us. We get to, we get to determine democratically what we do in this strike and what we do in bargaining and we're going to continue to do that. And it's my duty as you know, uh, an elected rep for uh, 3903 to, to support that. And that's what I'm going to do. That's what everybody who uh, you know, is busy today or wasn't able to attend is going to continue to do. I know a lot of a lot of people are there trying to work out payroll and get that going. And they're not always given the, you know, the notoriety for that or, or anything. So anyway, support to everybody. It's one day longer, one day stronger. Thanks. All right, everybody, listen. Scholar Strike Canada one of the co-sponsors of this event, uh, seems to have anticipated the conditions that we are all living and fighting in right now. Because it was a few years back that Beverly Bain um, and um, Min Suk Lee decided together that they were going to found Scholar Strike. We were locked down in the pandemic and it was an opportunity that Bev and Min Suk brought together in just a few days to talk about issues of resistance and political organizing on our campuses, the places where people work and go to school, and not just being there as students or as faculty, but as in extending the political struggle that we're all engaged into the places of study. Scholars Strike Canada continues to do this work today. We continue to have regular teach-ins, events, broadcasts where we talk about all of the kinds of things that have been raised today. We welcome your participation. We welcome your ongoing support with Scholar Strike Canada. We thank Scholar Strike Canada. We thank the No Private Policing Coalition. Occasions Catering, give it up for them one more time for all the food today. We say thank you to all of the marshals who came out here on short notice to support everyone and keep us all safe. Thank you to our police liaisons who did that work so that the rest of us could have a good time here today. Thank you to our live streamer. Thank you to everybody who came to, you know, set up a booth here, give out different information. And to all of you who are on the picket lines at 3903, as somebody who has never been a member of a union myself, this is my third time here since the strike started. We gotta keep coming back until the job gets done. And we love you guys. That's what we came here to tell you today. Have a wonderful afternoon. If you need any assistance in getting out of here, let one of our marshals know. We can walk you somewhere. We can accompany you somewhere. If you're feeling unsafe, never go anywhere by yourself. That's not how we do things. We keep each other safe. Thank you very, very much, everybody. Have a great afternoon. Full force. We can't take back the road. We don't have the numbers right now. I just, I don't want to put, a, put anyone at risk. And, uh, well, we don't want to put anyone at risk. It's a collective decision. But I think we can definitely walk by at least that fucking cop car over there that's been stationed all day, every day for five days a week. And uh, give him one simple message that we can't be fucked with. Free, free! Let's get the fuck... How much do I pay you to be here? Too much! Too much! Too much.